Hi everybody, Frank Pound here from AstroSec. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this topic called space resilience as it relates to the Hackasat hacking competition that was started by the Air Force and Space Force uh, nearly two years ago. Uh, I've been involved with, uh, with that project for quite some time and the recurring theme obviously is how to make more secure space architectures uh, and with the Hackasat program uh, we used a small satellite model uh, and a ground station uh, as sort of the, the centerpiece of, of the competition uh, to try to showcase uh, you know, what could be done by an adversary, but also showcase what could be done uh, by defenders to make for a more resilient uh, space architecture. So what does it mean to be uh, resilient in space? Well, first, let's think back to 30 years ago and uh, the, the organizations that were involved uh, in space operations, launching satellites into space. Um, everybody thinks of a satellite as this you know, sort of big square with solar panels sticking out the sides and big antennas sitting up in space and providing some sort of service. Um, some of those services could be communications, um, you know, facilitating the, the watching of live, live sports like the Olympics, which are going on right now. Uh, there's lots of satellites involved in relaying those communications from Japan uh, to ground stations across the globe and distributing that video for everyone to see. So communication satellites historically have been you know, the, one of the primary uh, things people think about when they think about objects in space that are performing some sort of service. Uh, we also have spy satellites up there that take pictures of certain places on Earth and we have other sensors. Uh, that are part of scientific missions that NASA um, and the European Space Agency and others have launched uh, for deep space exploration. Specifically, what I'm going to talk about though is uh, not so much about satellites that are uh, performing those functions of communications or spy satellites or things like that. What I want to focus on though is this uh, new space economy. And the new space economy is enabled by the democratization of a lot of technologies uh, that are now within reach of, uh, of just about anyone uh, with, uh, with a little bit of a budget and some imagination. Uh, it's, it's come time today where if you have an idea uh, that involves collecting data from space, it's not so hard to realize that idea, uh, build your own spacecraft, uh, pay uh, a, a moderate sum of money uh, to get that spacecraft uh, launched alongside dozens of others uh, through economy of scale, uh, sort of pioneered by SpaceX and others, uh, and get your platform in orbit to collect that data. Um, a lot of people are thinking about monetizing that data, uh, you know, swipe your credit card and get pictures of your backyard, things like that. So how does resilience relate to that? Well, the thing is, if you think back, there's a parallel to this, and the parallel is the, the origin of the internet. The, the internet was created uh, back in the 60s and 70s uh, for the purpose of uh, resilient communications. However, one of the, the issues with uh, the creation of the internet is uh, folks only thought of it as a, as a capability to, to recover from a catastrophic nuclear war. Uh, and people didn't really think about the fact that, well, the internet itself could be attacked or, or used for malice. And so for many, many years in the 70s and 80s and early 90s, the internet sort of grew up in this sort of protected club-like atmosphere uh, only used by governments and universities and it was never really exposed to sort of the, the general malice of the, of the global community. And the same thing potentially could happen uh, in the new space economy as folks are starting to create these great ideas and, and great monetization platforms for space. Well, what follows is the criminal syndicates and the other, you know, maybe not so uh, friendly nation states who want to sort of take advantage of those uh, of those new resources that are being, you know, funded and paid for by their adversaries. And so we must be resilient to that sort of thing. So how are we going to be more resilient? Well, we can look back again to the to the creation of the internet, and we can start to think about how can we design in security from day one? How can we think about more resilient designs uh, from day one? Um, part of that comes with thinking like the adversary. Um, thinking like the adversary means, you know, if you're a hacker, um, what would you do to try to break into your, uh, your competitor's systems? 
Um, and so, so that means looking at the ground stations, looking at the software that goes into the ground stations, looking at the communication links that connect the ground stations together, um, looking at the antenna segments that receive the data that goes into the ground station, and then looking at the, the, the protocols that are used to communicate to the satellites in space, um, looking at the satellites themselves. And, and so um, we, we did all this in the Hackasat project. Um, the engineers who built the competition framework, a uh, group called Cromulence, actually built a real world model of a flat sat uh, to enable us to act like adversaries and actually run to ground some of these potential vulnerabilities that we saw or that we're, that we're perceiving. And, uh, and it was so successful, they're, they're going to do it again with Hackasat uh, 2.0. So um, in summary, you know, resilience really means understanding, you know, thinking about the vulnerabilities that exist and thinking about ways to mitigate those vulnerabilities with practical application of good engineering thought and good engineering designs.